More FTX news. Wow, I can't believe what the new CEO just said. That story, story about a gold-backed stablecoin, and are you rushing to XRP Classic? I don't know. Next on OG Crypto and NFTs, welcome everyone. My name is Troy, and with along with my producer, Emmy, we're going to go over the latest news in digital assets and non-fungible tokens, or NFTs. Now, before we jump into it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Boom, boom, boom. There it is or that subscribe finger. We're gonna give you the best five to 10 minutes in crypto on a daily basis. Now, before we jump into any of this, I wanna have a little quick discussion with our producer, Emmy. Hi, Emmy. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, everything that glitters is gold, isn't it? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Would you buy a gold backed stable coin? Maybe so. Maybe so. Well, wait, uh, I mean, I have some unicorns. You have some unicorns? Oh, that's your that's your little thing with uh -huh. uh, Rosie Rios. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Yeah. So, well, let's, let me go jump back into the news here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if she was a gold digger. <laughs> Iran and Russia want to issue a new stable back by gold. Now, it's obviously gold is fluctuates. It's traded all over the world. It's paper traded. On the, on the exchange here, uh, stock exchange. So with all that being said, we're not sure exactly how they're gonna make it a stable coin. Now, there's many people that have predicted this year that gold, which now currently trades right, uh, you know, a tick above 1,900 an ounce, it's gonna hit three, four, maybe even 5,000 ounces. And people are talking about it also becoming stable, meaning it jumps up so much that it becomes stable there for a while. Now, the accumulation of central banks all over the world, especially Russia and China, has been enormous. Now, Iran has got jumped into that, Egypt jumped into it. Everybody who's trying to get off the dollar, moving the dollar to buy things is jumping into gold. And the word on the street, Russian street, Chinese street, is that they're gonna utilize that for the, they're gonna back it by a, a CBDC or central bank digital currency will be backed by gold or something. It won't just be like the US dollar that can be printed forever. And, and it just, you're just printing yourself into oblivion and then you have a debt. It just becomes debt, paper, it becomes useless toilet paper debt. That's all really the US dollar really is. Ever since Nixon signed off saying that it's no longer backed by an asset, which was gold back, the US dollar was, it just becomes toilet paper. And that's why we're in what we're in. I think the last nine recessions that we've had were all caused by the Fed raising interest rates and lowering interest rates on a useless dollar, causing our lives hell and making politicians rich. Next. And if, if FTX news, everybody wants to hear it. Guys, Johnny Ray, I mean, come on, bro. We just, we just saw the biggest fraud history and we're gonna go try to reopen this garbage FTX. It says new FTX chief says crypto exchange could restart. Come on, you pay everybody back first, then you restart. No one's first, and, and, and of course you're in the Bahamas, it's offshore. Who would put their money back on this? And is it so much that they don't trust what would happen because now you're gonna be regulated up the beep. But more importantly, it's a principle of the thing. Why would anybody put money on this exchange if, if, you saw all your buddies and friends, or you heard all these stories of people using their life savings. I mean, they're still, they're, they're suing Tom Brady and Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Kevin O'Leary and all these people are getting sued left and right. You know, it's just a complete mess. Why are we even talking about this? This is so stupid. Pay people back first. Figure out who the 133 names are. Get them on the stand, why they were paid by FTX and they're not telling us about it. There, there's no comment by most of their names. Come on, we have a lot more digging to do than put this, this garbage up there from the media. Next, and then I'm gonna make this quick. Crypto lawyer shares blame for FTX. Other disasters, CFTC commissioner says, you know what I say? You're fired. Why are you even in this? You blew it. You're fired. Get your ass out of there, okay? I mean, if you couldn't do your job, then let's go find someone else can do your job. Gary Gensler, you're fired. 
I mean, this is ridiculous. This has everything to do with political parties, has nothing to do with what they care about, you and me. If you vote blue, you vote red, they only care about blue or red. They don't care about who voted for them. It's very obvious. For all the people who bloated, who voted for Team Blue, you have 80,000 IRS agents with billions of dollars behind them to go sue you into oblivion. That's exactly what the blue team did. Now, here's more of the blue team letting all the fraud get by and, and, and then slow playing this. People should be in jail right now before they ever get to point. I mean, wh why not put her in jail? I mean, she blew it. She blew it and cost people their livelihoods, all their, all their money, her and Gary Eggboy Gensler. Next. Very controversial. XRP Classic. Looks like, I don't, I'm not sure who, who came up with this coin. This guy is way promoting it. Jack the Rippler. I've seen several different influencers call it BS. There's nothing back behind it. I don't know myself. Is it a scam? Is it not a scam? Personally, why would I put any money in an XRP Classic, which is a completely made up coin that has nothing to do with Ripple versus me putting money in XRP that has a potential someday to be worth hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars versus a meme coin. It's a friggin' meme coin, okay? Again, Bonk was what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago on Solana. You obviously had Doge, Shina Inu. There's a zillion of them out there. It's it Moon, well, I don't know if I should say this, but what was that moon, whatever, you know, to the moon, whatever that, that crap was. Why would anyone deal with this? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, to, to say, nope, I don't want nothing to do with it. I want nothing to do with an XRP classic. It just seems like I'm utilizing this person. Jack the Rippler is utilizing the name and then turning around and making money off it. Pump and dump. Let's go on to our NFT news. Guys, let me bring on the lovely producer, Emmy. I'm back. And she's back. <laughs> All right, Emmy. Well, okay, so the sewer passes. Uh -huh. uh, Yuga Lab. Yuga Labs, they had their sewer passes drop this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Yep. right? Yesterday. Uh, and they got over $6 million in sales in, in a matter hours. of hours. That's right? amazing. So what they did was, I think they gave them away for free, and then people sold them, and they've already, I mean, it's already just, project. I think that's what that's what this is about. I don't know. It seems like some people got them for free, but they might have listed some also. I'm not super clear on that, but essentially it just gives you access to a skill-based game called Dookie Dash, and you can only play this game between January 19th to February 8th. And scores accumulated from gameplay will be part of a broader narrative experience called Chapter One at a later date. So I think this has a lot to do um, with the CEO from um, Blizzard Activision. Yeah. Activision came over to Yuga Labs, and I think we're going to see a shift in how they are running this stuff with more game based game based perks right things yeah it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this how this shifts so it, it's it's funny because i you know obviously you labs came out and the board api club had several different videos about their launch here but they they kept it kind of secretive mm -hmm. and then they launched it and now we know it's for i have a feeling that this game is being downplayed it's more of a gamers thing mm -hmm. so a lot of the collectors who are not gamers mm -hmm. won't even think about this but i think somewhere down the road this is gonna be something mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like it like it leads up to points and then points go to chapter two and the more points you have you get a better nfts or mm -hmm. whatever and people are gonna go oh i should have played this game a lot more right oh, possibly, and, yeah. and so that's my thing that happens here uh, I'm, I'm a tier oneer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I didn't want to go spend eight ETH to get a tier two pass, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of crazy to me. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, how many people have board apes that are just not? I mean, they're they're just not involved in the community that I'm going to pick this up. Actually, the the uh, dad at the liquor store whose board ape you want to buy? That's exactly what he said. He was thinking about selling his board ape because he knows they're going towards gaming and he's just not into it. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, the longtime holders who have no interest in gaming, like if they decide to keep their ape or get rid of it, or right. maybe we'll see an influx of them on the on 
on OpenSea, I don't know, but it's definitely going to be a shift. And I, I am curious to see how Yuga Labs deals with the pros and the cons of it. So, right. All right, next. So L'Oreal is the parent company of NYX, Nick's Makeup. And they are launching a, a DAO via Ethereum NFTs to redefine beauty. Uh, apparently, Nix wants to create a crypto savvy community of aesthetic enthusiasts. I don't know. It sounds a lot like a lot of branding to me. They have a really cool video. Uh, I'll play just a segment of it for you guys. This is good AI. AI art, yeah. Yeah, experience. A lot different than board ape. Yeah, very different. The, uh... But like, it, it also doesn't really tell you what's happening. Like, you you just get to see a bunch of cool art. Right. That's about it. Uh, this project is called Gorgeous. Which okay, this is great branding. I think this is super fun. Great, <laughs> super fun. It is. This is super fun. And apparently, they have something called the Fuck with Me Pass, which is an NFT. It's going to be released on February first. But price. blow that up. Blow those names up because because it, it's it, it. They don't actually use a name. So yeah. So it's it's. It's that, but it's like assumed, right? That's like fuck with me. Yeah. Apparently, you gotta get your mouse on this screen. Yeah. This one's backwards, remember? Yeah. There we go. So if I look at this. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty ridiculous. Um. It's right there. Yeah. The fuck with. I think that's what fuck with me. That's like what I read when I see that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting. Um, about two hundred ninety dollars each. Basically, they want to shine a light on 3D creators and give them a path to success within the Web3 ecosystem. This is a very common thing that we've been seeing lately, like big, big, major conglomerate brands are doing some sort of Web3 something, whether it's metaverse or NFTs or whatever. They're all kind of doing this, which is really wild to me that like all these huge brands are just jumping in to Mm -hmm. Web3 and like how they can spin their own thing. So... This is absolutely a trend, and I think we're going to continue to see more and more brands jump in. So, well, fantastic. I yeah. mean, I, you know, the thing is, is that every time we talk about this, we go, "Oh, we're going to get a wallet and get one," and then we never do because it just—it seems like it's a, a daily basis. It's overwhelming. Yeah, it happens so frequently now that, like, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. The first person, the first branding that I really saw in the metaverse—it's been a long, long time ago. It was Gary Vee. Oh, really? Gary V got it. When I got into crypto, Gary V was putting together and launching his NFT collection. And he he started, stopped it, started, stopped it, started. And that's why I never got into the very first phase. Because the day he was supposed to go live, he didn't. And mm. I, you know, and then again, the first time anyone gets a wallet or a MetaMask wallet, and then you put ETH in it, which you don't know how ETH in it, and then started, you know, gotta connect the wallet and do all this. You know, two years ago when he when he's putting this together. Then you look back today and you're like, wow, this is, you know, how many, the 95% of, of the world did he, would, it was in my spot two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and now all these brands are going to utilize these NFTs as either a discount or it's, it's an entrance into their metaverse, which is into their store. Some sort of membership, or, yeah. Or uh, specials like, hey, mm-hmm. come to our metaverse store, mm-hmm. you know, and you get an, an hour before UTC. UTC is becoming very popular, by the way. UTC? What do you mean? That's that's a worldwide time. Oh, interesting. Right. So if they go UTC and it's your so a lot of times you'll do a UTC and then it will be next to it. It'll say because your computer reads what that num name that time is and it'll tell you you know four o'clock PST for your time or zone. one or you know seven EST right. Hmm. But the U at U UTC is becoming very popular. Interesting. You know, I think uh, we're going to continue to see this specifically. I'm thinking of like Sephora. So every year they have a sale at like a specific time, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're one of the members, you get early access and there's tiers in that membership too. So the more you spend, the better access you get and the bigger discount you get. So I think we're going to continue to see that type of membership and discounting within the Web3 NFT spaces. Cause I know we did report on Sephora having some sort of metaverse thing. Mm-hmm. Now imagine you're, you know, VIB Rouge, which is the top tier and you get early access and you get a bigger discount and you have an NFT from the event. Like, there you go. Yeah. So things all make sense, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's a collectible and mm-hmm. somewhere down the road, you might be, you might become very popular and mm-hmm. someone, they might say, hey, you know, like, uh, 
Black Friday sale, the first two hours, anyone who holds the NFT gets in and gets a special additional 5% off. Yeah, or whatever. Right. I, I can definitely see this continuing to go that direction. So I'll keep pulling stories like this just because they absolutely fascinate me. A company like L'Oreal doing this is just like, that's bonkers. Well, you wouldn't even think they would do it. You, right? I wouldn't even think, but L'Oreal is a parent company of so, so many different cosmetics. Mm -hmm. I think they're seeing the other brands, Burberry, um, what was that? Other, Mont Montclair. Like we've reported on some really high end luxury fashion houses that are going straight head first into the Web3 yeah. and metaverse space. So I think we're going to continue to see other brands doing exactly the same. Just FOMOing in. Yeah. Again, going back to NFTF. NFTF. Yeah. The, the CryptoPunks and the Tiffany thing. I'm just always going to refer back to that because that is insane. No, that is insane. That's insane. So. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us today. We definitely appreciate you watching us. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, we will see you tomorrow. Bye.